Welcome to Reflections with Father Morris Emelieu. And now, Father Morris's Reflections. Pray with me. Come, Holy Spirit. Fill the hearts of the faithful and enkindle in us the fire of your love. God love you and God bless you. We thank God for yet another beautiful Sunday. The day that we celebrate the birthday of the church. So happy birthday. Don't you realize that the Pentecost Sunday is the actual birthday of the church? Yes. And because it's that day that the church was commissioned to go forth and be missionary disciples, using the word of Pope Francis, to be missionaries to the whole world, to evangelize by the Holy Spirit. When those apostles who were locked in the upper room because of fear of the Jews, when the Holy Spirit came, what did they do? They became bold. And they preached, they prophesied, they testified, they bore witness to what the Lord has done. So that's why theologians and the magisterium in the past have em emphasized that that's actually the birthday of the church. But I will give us a little background to the event we are celebrating today. So that we can connect with that story in the most profound way. Or don't you want to connect with it? Good. <laughs> so the theme of our homily this morning is Welcome Holy Spirit. It's, it's a theme and it's a prayer. So you can pray that prayer with me. Welcome Holy Spirit. Again. Holy Spirit. With God, there is no coincidence. There is no chance, no accident, no coincidence. You know, often people say it was by chance. <laughs> In the dictionary of God, if there is anything like that, there is nothing like chance. Everything that God does is Providence is well planned out, well designed to reach the ultimate purpose which God has set forth in Christ. I love the way the Catechism of the Catholic Church talked about it. I think it is in number 302. It says that everything is set forth in statu vea. Start to there means in a process to fulfilling what God has set for it. Don't think that it was by chance that you came to Mass today. Or it's by chance that you are who you are. It is providence. And all things, even those things that seem negative, those things that seem not to make sense to you. All things, the St. Paul tells us in Romans chapter 8, all things, verse 28, all things work unto good for those who believe. And the event we are celebrating today, the Mass of the Holy Spirit, the Mass of Pentecost Sunday, is a typical example of providence at work. You know about the people of, the, of, of Israel? You know about the Jews? You know about Judaism? You know about the Old Testament? Good. The Old Testament is a connection to the New Testament in a most profound way. And the events celebrated in those days were all orchestrated by the Lord to lead us to where he wanted us to be. You realize that God gave the people of Israel a command to celebrate three great feasts. 
And you know the feast. Come on, church. You know the feast. <laughs> Read your Bible. <laughs> there are other minor, minor feasts. But the three main feasts that are celebrated as national feasts in the Old Testament, which became the feast of the Israelite people, of the Jews, there are three. The first one is called the Feast of the Unleavened Bread. Yes, the Feast of Passover. It is the same thing. That feast was to celebrate the redemption the, the freedom from the captivity in the land of Egypt, which the Lord made happen in the life of the people when they were slaves in Egypt. The word Passover, probably taken from the line in the Old Testament, Exodus, I think, Exodus chapter 12, verse 13, when I see the blood, I will pass over you it was the word that the lord told the people kill the lamb every family that can afford and afford it and finish one lamb must kill one lamb one innocent lamb one year old and put the blood on the lintel so that i might the angel of death seeing the blood will pass over you because this night i have decided to set my people free from the gods and goddesses and powers of the Egyptians, so that you will know that I am the Lord. <laughs> that event was a manifestation of yet another event, or rather the realization, or, or intermediate realization of yet another event that brought us to kind of uh, imprisonment to the saints of to the things of the world by the fall of the first man and first woman we had what we call the original sin and we lost original innocence we became vulnerable to sin vulnerable to concupiscence vulnerable to the pride of life we we are vulnerable to corruption and decay so we needed redemption so the Passover was a figure of that redemption that is yet to come. Even though it happened in the life of the people of Israel, but it was preparing God's people for something else in future. All God's providence. And I will tell you how it is all connected. The Passover was celebrated the first time when the people were saved by the Lord on that night. And he told them, celebrate this to remember the salvation that the Lord brought to you with his mighty arm and hand outstretched. And you know, for us Christians, that lamb or the lambs that were killed at the Passover were parallels pointing to something else, the Lamb of God. Remember when John was baptizing on the river Jordan. The scripture says he saw Jesus approach. And what did he say? Behold the Lamb of God who taketh away the sins of the world. In the Revelation, book of Revelation, the revelation that God gave to the beloved at the island of Patmos. He spoke of Jesus who can open the scroll wherein is written our salvation? He said, Behold the Lamb that was slain. He is worthy to open the scroll. Jesus is that Lamb. What, was, what happened in the Old Testament was preparatory to Jesus, who is the Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. And guess what? He was slain on the Friday called Good. And Good Friday was the day of Passover. 
So it was the day the Jews were celebrating the Passover. St. John called it the same day. Matthew, Mark, Mark, and Luke said it was within the same period. Whether Thursday or Friday or Saturday, it doesn't matter. But it's the same season. So it became the day that the Jews were celebrating the Passover of the Old Testament was the day that the true Lamb of God, our Lord Jesus Christ, was killed as the Passover Lamb to give you and I the salvation from sin. No longer the salvation from the slavery of Egypt. We, are, we no longer live in Egypt, but the salvation from sin that is everywhere. <laughs> the Lamb. And it... In the Jewish culture, they were anticipating the final cup, what they call the fourth cup of salvation. And Jesus drank that cup on the cross to fulfill the Old Testament, the law, and the prophets. Now, wait for this. You've not even started. Wait. <coughs> I want you to see how God's plan is all connected. It's not, it's, it's so connected that if you understand it as individuals, then you live a different kind of life in the world, knowing that God is in charge of history, God is in charge of everything, God is particularly, uniquely in charge of you. It gives you a different kind of confidence. The confidence of one who is like a baby on the palms of the mom taking care of her. Now, the second feast celebrated in the Jewish culture is called what? The second biggest feast <laughs> in the Jewish culture. <laughs> Don't worry, you will get it, okay? Don't worry about that. It's called the Feast of the Shavuot. Shavuot was trans probably Hebrew, translated in Greek as Pentecost and transliterated in English as Pentecost. And it was celebrated, the Lord commanded them, a day after the, the seven times seven of the Passover, you celebrate the Shavuot which means 50 days after the Passover. Why 50 days? Because it took them 40 days approximately to reach Mount Sinai. And it took Moses 10 days to be up on the mountain to receive the law. And by the time he came down, we read from the Old Testament how the whole place was shaken because God was speaking. God gave Moses the law called the Torah. To give to the people as his guideline for their lives as a nation. In fact, in the Israelite culture, the Pentecost is the official birthday of the Judaic religion, of the Judaic people. So they celebrate it as their birthday because they also call it the day of the harvest. When we harvested of the law of God, the Torah, to become God's unique people as a nation. And it was also a day they celebrate their strength as a people who have been energized by the word of God and the spirit of God that spoke on the mountain and gave them the strength to lead. So it's also called the Feast of Harvest, Shabbat, Pentecost, Nationhood. So what's the connection to what we celebrate? By the way, Torah means what? Literally, Torah means five. Referring to the five first books of the Bible, the Pentateuch. Five symbolizing each one, ten, ten days, ten times five, fifty. Isn't it providential that fifty days after the true Passover, after the crucifixion of Jesus Christ, 50 days after the people of the new, of the redeemed of the Lord in the church were gathered in the upper room, 
the apostles and disciples plus Mother Mary, about 120 people praying on the 50th day, the day of Pentecost. God, the same way he came in the old law, came now in a new way with the sign of his presence of the fire in their head and the fire of love in their heart. God gifted them with his presence, the Holy Spirit, and they became emboldened to become a new people. Now, no longer just the people of Israel, but a new nation for the Lord, the church. Connection. You think it is accidental? Providence. <laughs> it was providence that it took place that very day. And you guess what? In the Old Testament, when God spoke from the Mount of Sinai, the people were shaken. Some of them were in the state of sin. And how many people died around the mountain? Do you know how many people? About 3,000 people died. Yes. On the day of Pentecost, when the Holy Spirit came upon the new church, Peter broke the, went out of the door that was already ajar and started to proclaim the good news of the Lord. How many people were born to new life? How many people converted and became believers that day? How many people? 3,000. You see the connection? <laughs> God had a plan to build a new people on the day of Pentecost so that it will fulfill the Old Testament pro prom promise. And providentially too, you are a member of that people. You are privileged to become part of it. So what we celebrate today is this birthday of you belonging to God, receiving the Spirit of God, being part of divine promise. So what is the expectation on your own part? It is just to say, oh God, thank you and I welcome you. That's all he needs. <laughs> I welcome you as a beneficiary of this, your gratuity, of your grace, of your grace of love. And this love is the Holy Spirit bringing new law into our hearts. No longer the Torah written on, written on the tablet of stone, but a law written in our hearts to call God Abba. Father, to relate with God in the language of love, to speak one language. Think about it. How many of us here from different nations, Africa, Hispanic, German, um, England, American, Native Americans, all over the world, different Asia, from the Oceania, every part of the world, but we are speaking one language, the language of the liturgy, the language of the church that everybody, even those who don't understand what I'm saying because maybe they are native Mexican speakers or because of my accent, they connect with the same story because we are part of one language, the language of the Holy Spirit, bonding us together as one church. And I want to tell you that if you go to any part of the world today, the same liturgy we are celebrating, the same readings, the same rites is what you will see amazing the Holy Spirit. And I want to tell you, you cannot be very, very dynamic and convinced about your faith unless you allowed this spirit, this soul, of the church, this soul of the apostolate to dwell within you. You've received confirmation or you may not have received confirmation, but connect with that providence, with that story. And do not be a barrier to the spirit of love. Thanks for listening to these reflections by Father Morris Emelieu.